Greetings. This will be short answer number three from the spring 2017 mock exam, a walkthrough. So you can see that a 0.7 kilogram mass is attached to a spring. The mass is then displaced a distance of 0.2 meters, and it is observed that it will oscillate with a period of 0.669 seconds. So part A asks, if the mass were instead displaced 0.1 meters, what will happen to the frequency of oscillation? Well, if I recall my equations for mass on a spring, I know that the period can be calculated as 2 pi times the square root of the mass over the spring constant. And I can also recall that period is the inverse of frequency, or you can think of this as frequency being the inverse of period. So whatever affects period affects frequency. Now, in this equation, all that I have affecting period or frequency is mass and spring constant. Displacement does not show up. That means that displacement does not affect period or frequency. So, what will happen? Nothing. Nothing will happen if we change the displacement. So part B says, what is the value for the spring constant of this spring? So here's where my equations will come in handy. So my equation that involves my known information is period is 2 pi times the square root of m over k. From my original problem statement, I have mass is 0.7 kilograms. I have a period of 0.669 seconds. And I'm looking for my spring constant. So there are two ways to do this. We can solve my equation algebraically without plugging anything in, or we can plug in some values and solve it that way. Let's try algebraically. So t is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k, and I'm solving in this case for k. So first step is I want to isolate k, and so what I'll do is I will move 2 pi to the other side, so I will divide by 2 pi. So I have t over 2 pi equals square root of m over k. Then I need to get rid of my radical sign, and I will do that by squaring both sides. So I will end up with period squared over, now be careful, 2 pi squared becomes 4 times pi squared. And on this side, my radical disappears, so I have m over k. So here I have two tricks I can do. One, I think the most easy, would be to cross multiply both of these or cross multiply these two fractions, and I will end up with t squared times k equals 4 pi squared times m. And now the last step to solve for k is simply to divide both sides by period squared. So k will be equal to 4 pi squared times m all over period squared. So since I'm out of room at the bottom, I will drag this up here and substitute some values. So k will be equal to 4 times pi squared times the mass of 0.7 kilograms all over the period squared, which is 0.669 seconds squared. So substituting these values and using a calculator, will yield 61.7, and the units for a spring constant are newtons per meter. So that is my value for the spring constant. C goes on to ask, if you use the same spring, so what does that mean? The same spring means same K. If I use the same spring and replace the 0.7 kilogram mass with a 2 kilogram mass and have the same displacement, what happens to the frequency? Or sorry, what frequency will be observed? So my k, I just calculated, I will use is 67, 61.7 newtons per meter. My new mass is 2 kilograms. And that's all I need in order to calculate a period and therefore frequency. So starting again with t equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. 
simply need to substitute for mass and spring constant. So that's two kilograms over 61.7 newtons per meter. And pulling out my calculator, yields me a period of 1.13123 seconds. I'm not going to round until the very end. So last step would be frequency is the inverse of period. So frequency will be 1 over this 1.13123. And so simply throwing that into my calculator yields me approximately 0.884, and that's one per second, or I can just know that the unit for frequency is hertz. So. The new frequency is 0.884 hertz. Now the last question asks you to plot the motion of the mass on the axes for exactly three periods. So what information do I need in order to do that? Well, I need amplitude and period. So amplitude in this case is equal to my displacement. Recall the definition of amplitude is displacement from the equilibrium position, or maximum displacement. And that, for this particular problem, will be 0.2 meters. The other thing I need is wavelength. So wavelength, I'm sorry, not wavelength, period. Period, in this case, is 1.13 seconds. And so, to the best of my ability, I need three waves. So that means that I need three waves where each wave has a period of 1.13 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and mark about four seconds on my graph. And I'm going to need a displacement or an amplitude of 0.2 meters up and 0.2 meters down. So we'll say 0.1 is a good step. So this is 0.2. 0.1, going down, negative 0.1, negative 0.2. And just in case there's any confusion, there's my zero. This is my displacement in meters. This is my time axis in seconds. And so it doesn't matter where you start your wave. I like to start at the equilibrium position, but I'm displacing it to begin with, so I'll go ahead and say that my displacement starts at positive 0.2 meters. So one period takes 1.13 seconds. That means at about 1.13 seconds, I need to be back at this exact same position. And halfway between those two times, I should be completely at the other position or other maximum displacement. And so in between this, I can kind of fudge it just a little bit to be approximately a quarter of the way between here, where my wave would look something like this. So now I just need to do this three more times. So this is 1.13. So my second wave should end at about 2.26. And my third wave should end at about 3.39. upward. Extend this upward. And then halfway in between, each of these will be my trough. So my final graph will look something like this. And that's my graph. So I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough. If you need to go back and watch how each of these is done, please do so.